everyone, Jesse here for 3 Prong Gaming, and in today's episode, actually, we are not going to be adding anything. We're not going to be building anything in this episode. Instead, I wanted to do an overview of what exactly we have going on when we spawn our uh, ghost building here and then place it down. There's actually quite a bit that's going on. And I wanted to explain it. I know the last couple episodes have been a little bit long and uh, might be a little bit confusing. So just to kind of clear it out so you can sh see the method to the madness, because we're going to build upon that. So it's better that you maybe get a grasp of what's going on now. So it's not quite so confusing um, in the upcoming episodes. Uh, just so you know, in the upcoming episodes, uh, what you'll have actually... After this one will be, um, we're going to do our overlapping so that you can't place buildings on top of each other. And then uh, after that, we'll be doing kind of like a, a slope check. We're going to make sure that the uh, mesh is relatively balanced on the ground. We don't want it to have any funky layouts. Um, otherwise, your AI will not be able to get to it to do anything with it. So, all right, let's go ahead and get this going. Uh, I just demonstrated exactly what we've got going on to this point. So here in the camera pawn controller, all right, let's zoom out here a little bit. And when we spawn our buildings, uh, when, when the game starts, remember we have a ghost building and a construction manager that are persistent. We never, we're never going to get rid of these in the entire game. These are important. We need to keep them there. And so that way we can always use them. Okay, so here in the made HUD, when uh, we click our buttons, which we've designated this button one and this one button two, uh, when we come in here, and eventually we'll probably need better names for that because in a game like a city builder, we're going to end up having a ton of buttons, a bunch of different UIs. So we'll have to be a little bit more clear on exactly what we're doing. But when you click on the button, what it's doing is it's calling this construction building, which we are sending it to the ghost building, the construct building here. Okay. And what we're passing along in each of these is this one is the apartment small and this one is the construction office. So these are the blueprints. They're not spawned. They're, they're not part of the world yet, but we're saying, Hey, this is the blueprint that I want to pass along. Okay. So now when that calls the ghost building and the ghost building BP now in the event graph, here's the construct building section. Okay. So it receives the call takes that main building. So say we click on the apartment building, it takes that and it spawns it. Okay. And when it spawns it, we set a transform of zero, zero, zero initially, because all we're doing with this is we need to get the display mesh. Okay. So uh, remember we set the display mesh um, for each of those blueprints and we need that and we need the construction proxy. Now we're not doing anything with this variable in itself. All we did, we, we set its default to the construction proxy blueprint. Okay. So now it knows that it's the construction proxy, just like when we click the building and send it here, um, we're saying, Hey, we want the construction proxy blueprint. Okay. And then with uh, the display mesh here. So in this sequence, the first line of defense here is the uh, cast of building master. Now, even though we're passing along, say, the apartment building, because of the parent-child, grandparent, however you want to do it, it's just parent-child relationship, because it is of building master BP, we can cast to it in its class. Okay, And if it passes, if it is a building uh, master uh, child, then we pass that along and we kill the ghost. First, we need to kill the ghost. Remember in the ghost building here, the kill ghost just resets all the variables. Okay. We'll go over that in a little bit more detail in a minute, but we kill the ghost. And the purpose for doing that here before we spawn it is because we want to make sure that if you currently have uh, a mesh following the mouse around and you click another button before you actually set the uh, ghost to be constructed, um, we need to clear that mesh out. We don't need multiple meshes following your cursor. Okay. And then we call on spawn and what we pass to on spawn is the display mesh, the building class and the construction proxy building class coming from the uh, cast of it. All right. And which it will remember that it's the apartment or the construction or whichever button sent along here. Okay. So now in the on spawn, we're still in the ghost uh, building blueprint. We come in here and on spawn, we check to make sure it's active, meaning we don't already have something following the mouse cursor. Okay. If it's not active, 
then perfect. We want to continue on with this. So we set our variables here, building class, construction proxy, with everything that we just passed, the display mesh, and then we set, yes, it is active. Okay, so that way this can't be called again while we have a mesh following our cursor. And then we set uh, the build mode, and again, uh, this isn't perfect object-oriented programming. I should make a function for this, just like I did with the uh, set cursor location, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. So then we, uh, we set build mode to active, and I'll show you that in just a minute. And then we set our static mesh, uh, which is the ghost building mesh up here, all right, to the display mesh that we set right here. And then we open the tick gate. Now, before we jump into open tick gate, let me just remind you what we do when we set build mode active. Come back here to the camera pawn controller. And then down here in the tick, if build mode is active, what we do is we set the cursor world position. Now, I'm not going to go into everything that we did. Those are in the previous episodes. This is uh, simply just to overview how everything is working. So with build mode active, we set cursor world position. So that way, every time we move our mouse around the world, it's constantly updated via the tick so that when we come back to the ghost building BP, the static mesh will follow our cursor. Okay. And then with that, we open up the tick gate. And the tick gate is just a local event, a custom event that we set down here, and it's down here in our tick. Okay, so we have our event tick coming into a gate here. So now when we open that tick gate, which is right here, it allows this tick to run through the gate and set our actor location. The actor we want is our self, which is the ghost building mesh, or this itself would actually be this entire blueprint, which is right there. And its new location will be set via this grid snap vector all right, and by doing it like that, now we've got our inside the set grid, uh, uh, the set grid snap vector. We have our cursor world position, which was set via our um, set cursor world position. So back here in the ghost building. So this grid snap, and like I said, this isn't a previous episode, but this will allow us so that the mesh will snap in whatever increment we set. I set it to 50, so it'll snap in 50 block increments it won't just move smoothly all right so it'll lay for a little bit better layout okay and then ultimately that's it for the ghost building so what we do with that now when we want to spawn it we come back in here to our camera pawn controller and remember in the last episode actually episode uh, 10 i believe it was is we just set a left left mouse button here all right, so now we need to still ensure that build mode is active. All right, so we still have cursor world position, which it is. We come in here, and if it is active, we come in to the ghost building reference, and we get the construction script. All right, now what all this is doing is it's making a struct that we, we configured in the other episode um, called construction struct, and then we take all these variables that we set on spawn, and we add it to the struct. All right, the display mesh, the transform that we created here, and we want the current location rotation of the ghost building. All right, and we throw it into the struct, so we have it. And this work or work hours, we will be doing something with this later. For now, I just set it for one. And then we make it, and then we pass it on. All right, this is part of the object-oriented programming. So. After we get that, we pass that struct that we just made into the construction queue. The construction queue is in the construction manager. So let's click on that. All right, so it jumps into here, and it takes that struct that we just passed, and we break it along. Now, we're still not building the building yet because we're going to be doing construction, which the next couple episodes will be based on uh, we're going to start setting up our construction. All right, so um, but for now... All we need is we need the proxy class. The proxy is going to hold um, the construction. It's it's for the construction. That's why that's actually the construction proxy. Um, then we pass along. We spawn that into the world. That's what we want. We don't want to actually spawn our building yet. And then we give it the transform and the mesh that we just set there. Always spawn ignore locations because we're going to be doing our own um, overlap events. We're going to make sure ahead of time before we can spawn the building that. Uh, the collisions handled so we don't have to worry about that always spawn it all right and then after it spawns it what we do is we bind the construction complete event now this is uh, a custom event that we created here go into the event graph remember right here bind construction complete all right so it's calling that what that's doing is that is binding our event um, our event dispatcher which we'll I'll go over in just a minute um, it, it binds our event dispatcher 
and it creates the event. It sets it down here. We set it to construction completed with the proxy. So construction completed. And then we're passing that proxy onto the bind. So that way, when this is called, it's going to pass this proxy into here. And then it's going to send it to the finished construction. We'll come back to that in just a minute. All right. So after it binds the construction complete, then it, we add the proxy class, the building, into our array variable here called proxies. We add it to it so that way we can keep track of it. Remember, we're in the construction manager. This is persistent. We're always going to have access to this. So we always know what's being built. Okay. And then next to that, we've got the other array called Q. And that's just it, kind of confusing, I guess, with Q, but it's the... Um, it's this construction script that we have. We're just adding it to that. All right, now by doing this, we know ahead of time, this will be important in just a minute, we know ahead of time that these being inserted at the exact same time are gonna be put in in the exact same index in the proxy and the queue. So it'll make it important for us when we actually spawn the building. Okay, so after queue construction is done with this bind event, what it does, it comes back out here, it binds it, and then it runs construction completed which is the finished construction. However, since we spawned the construction proxy, construction proxy is spawned, let me go back into there real quick, in the queue construction, construct, we spawn it right here. So tick automatically starts. Anything we have in there, any process we have is gonna start to run. So in the construction proxy, right now, all we've got is the event tick. And this is super, super simple at this point. We're gonna have multiple functions in here that um, are going to keep track of all our construction and who's there constructing it. Um, this is just so we could spawn the building into the world. So this is all instantaneous. As soon as we place the building, it's going to construct it. Okay. So since we spawned it, event tick starts right after it can, right after it spawns. So then it's going to call the event dispatcher, which is, this is where we created the event dispatcher in the construction proxy. All right. So it's going to call the event. So any blueprint that's instantiated, that's a part of the world that has this, it's not like an interface where you have to tell it um, where to send the message to this, any, this will send it to any and all blueprints that, that have a reference to this, which for now, for us, it's just in the construction manager. So it's going to call this is now that this is bound, it's going to call the event that's bound to it, which for us is the construction complete. All right. Once it calls that, it's going to come into our finished construction. All right. So now what we need to do, the proxy that came through from the, for the finished construction is we need to find where that proxy is in our array proxies. All right. Once we find that, we get the index for it. And we set it here into a local variable because we don't need this anywhere else. We just set it to a local variable. And then using that index, we get the position in the queue of, um, of where this proxy is at. Like I said, in the queue construction, we set them. They're, they're going to be identical indexes in the blueprint. Okay, So once we find the index of the proxy, then we automatically know where the index is of the queue. So then we just get that out of the queue as well. From the queue, once we get that, we set the config, um, another local variable right here. We set that, and then we come over here, and now we remove the index. We remove these, um, this proxy, and we also remove the uh, queue. We remove the, the config from the queue using the index that we set right there. So then once those are removed, now we've got the stored information that we need, uh, most namely the config. We take the config, we break it out, the construction struct, all right? Now this is where we spawn our building. So we don't have the proxy class hooked in, up anymore. We just used the building class, which we had set and been passing along over the last couple uh, blueprints. We spawn that, use the transform, and that is pretty much it. It already knows uh, the display mesh and all that because we're spawning the building. So it's already set as default. So we don't have to worry about setting the uh, display mesh. And again, this work hours, we're going to end up passing along at some other point. But and then that's it. And then we destroy the actor and the actor we are destroying is the proxy. So that way it just removes it from the world. All right. And that is it. And just to verify that all this works, um, you can always come over here. All right, and let's just go ahead and hit play. Uh, do the best we can right here. Um, but you'll notice, hopefully you'll notice, we could see up there, 
well, actually, we're, we won't be able to see right away. But see, it spawns it right here as apartment small. Once we add our construction process to it, it'll actually, that won't be here. That'll show as construction proxy and whatever the blueprint number is. And then once our construction is complete, then it'll throw the name up there. So you know, even though we had cast it to the building master, because we passed back in our main UI, because we passed that as apartment small, it remembers that. And that's what it's going to be. Okay, so then same thing up here. We spawn construction, come up here, and not the construction manager, the construction office. That's what we did, BP2. Let's go ahead and do another one, and you'll see it pop up. Construction office BP4, just like that. So it'll keep track of it. And that's pretty much it for it. I know it's kind of confusing, but it's important that you kind of get a grasp of what's going on. I think it's a pretty good process the way it's laid out. Um, there's probably some other ways that you could do it, uh, but for as complex as it's going to get with us having buildings placed everywhere, we're going to need our AI to keep track of everything that's going on, and we're going to have to plan for that. So we need to set those things. We need to keep them persistent in the world. And uh, I think that's a pretty good process for doing it. And like I said, I know it's a little bit confusing, uh, but hopefully you guys understand that and uh, get a little bit better understanding of it now anyways. I know it was uh, confusing as I was doing it, um, but that's it. I hope you guys uh, uh, got a little bit better picture of it now. Hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you did, please do me a favor. Go down and hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and uh, subscribe while you're down there liking it. And until the next episode, peace.